The growth of civilizations is, for all we know, strongly correlated with access to energy. This is why fossil fuels have accelerated progress so much and why a lot of people understandably don't like the idea that we scale back on energy use. Indeed, astrophysicists speculate that we should be able to identify technologically advanced extraterrestrial civilizations because they would cover up their home star to capture its energy. But a new paper that just appears says that there are better ways to extract energy from stars and we've been looking for aliens the wrong way. That technological advances are strongly correlated with energy use inspired the Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev to classify civilizations by their ability to use energy. It's now called the Kardashev scale and should not be confused with the Kardashian scale, which ranks civilizations based on their ability to stay relevant on Instagram. Actually, we're not so much concerned with energy per se, but with power. That's the energy that can be used per time. On the Kardashev scale, type 1 civilizations use all the power available on their planet. That includes solar, but also geothermal, nuclear, wind, and so on. Estimates say that Earth could support about 100,000 terawatts of power. We currently use about 0.02% of that. So we have a long way to go and aren't even yet a type 1 civilization. Once a civilization is using all the power that their planet delivers, the next obvious source of energy is their star. A type 2 civilization harnesses the full energy output of their host star like with a Dyson sphere. That's a megastructure which captures all the radiation coming off the star. A type 3 civilization takes it a step further, using up all stellar bodies of the entire galaxy, stars but also black holes. And the type 4 civilizations finally use the power available in the entire universe. You see this summarized in this figure, which shows the relation between energy use per year and the size that the civilization needs to extend over. Earth is currently down here, and these orange dots are various future projections for Homo sapiens. As you can see, we're hugely underperforming. The Kardashev scale is usually interpreted to be about the radiation emitted by stars. Indeed, this seems to be why Elon Musk is so fascinated by solar power. When, when you think in Kardashev terms, it becomes very obvious that the sun is overwhelmingly the source of energy and everything else is tiny potatoes. <laughs> Tiny, tiny, tiny potatoes. The thing is, though, it's not true. You see, stars do nuclear fusion at a steady rate for a long time, and that's a convenient source of power, yes. But there is no physical reason why you can't generate energy much faster, resulting in more power. And most of the elements that can be fused to create energy in our universe are actually not in stars. They're mostly in interstellar and intergalactic clouds. This is where the new paper comes in. The authors point out that there are a variety of other ways that civilizations could grow much faster. They especially discuss stellivores, which literally means star eaters. These are civilizations that extract energy from their star by destroying it. And here I was thinking biosystem collapses dark. One mechanism is what they call star lifting. For that, you remove materials from the outer layers of the star, for example, with strong magnetic fields. And then you burn it in a nuclear fusion reactor. The point is that this will create energy much faster than waste waiting for the star to burn through its fuel naturally. Another thing that a civilization might do is to drag matter from elsewhere to nearby the star and let it get trapped by its gravitational field. This will create an accretion disk like around a black hole. As the material spirals inward, it will release massive amounts of energy, far more than the star's natural light. If that sounds like science fiction, it's because it is. But it has implications for our search for extraterrestrial life. Because when astrophysicists look for technologically advanced civilizations, they look for techno-signatures. Besides actual radio signals with modulations that imply information transfer, this search has mostly focused on Dyson spheres and similar megastructures that a Type II civilization would build around their star. These megastructures would unnaturally dim the star, 
which is something that we can look for. However, if you take into account civilizations that are impatient enough to literally rip their star into pieces, you might want to look for something else. For example, stars that have accretion disks for no particular reason, or that seem to conspicuously shrink. Tiny, tiny, tiny potatoes. What bothers me about this is that if you'd asked people 2,000 years ago how we'd be generating energy today, they wouldn't have had any chance of getting it remotely right. So what are the chances that we're able to extrapolate the growth of civilizations for billions of years? Right. But hey, at least we're having fun with it. As a sub-type 1 civilization, we have some way to go before we manage to extract nuclear plasma from the sun. And until we get there, I think it'd be a good idea if we take good care of our home planet. This is what my friends at Planet Wild are doing, and I want to warmly recommend you have a look at how much they've achieved and how much more they can achieve with your help. Planet Wild is a community-funded nature protection group. They restore ecosystems and change the world for the better, one mission at a time. Each month, Planet Wild embarks on a new mission, which they document with videos right here on YouTube. Whether it's planting trees, reintroducing animals to forests where they once thrived, or using drones to study blue whales, Planet Wild is making a real difference for nature protection. Preservation. For their most recent mission, they have teamed up with people in the United States to restore the grass and biodiversity in the Wild West to make it, well, wild again. They're removing fences and protecting and monitoring the animals such as bisons. And you can become part of it. Planet Wild walks the walk, where others just talk the talk, and you can help them. Planet Wild makes a real difference, one mission at a time. I've already joined them and I hope you'll too. If you use my link in the description below or scan the QR code, then I'll cover the first month of your subscription if you're among the first 200 to sign up using my code. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.